Eddie had to get Frazier back in the gym and start a rebuilding process. And in a little less than six months, he had him back in the ring against the fastest big man he could find in the form of Joe Bugner to try to prepare Frazier for the inevitable Ali rematch. All through this time, when Eddie Futch was handling Joe Frazier and Ken Norton, he was training a lot of other fighters. A lot of the bright lights and the focus of the boxing press is on the heavyweights, but Eddie was working on every weight division, you know, all over the country. He trained the likes of Mando Ramos, Cubanito Perez, Tony Licata, James Kinchin, Leroy Haley, and Willie Monroe, among many others. He always had the big picture. Back in the old days, there were eight weight divisions, and he was always studying all eight champions and had a fight plan for how to beat them. This was an ever-evolving study. Eddie once famously said to a fighter, you fight the first round and I'll fight the rest of the rounds. And he literally only needed one round of watching the opponent and he could analyze them on the fly. And if he had trained that guy before, forget about it. He had them completely solved. He brought this level of insight to every corner that he worked. Eddie had Thel Torrens and Hedgeman Lewis handling fighters in L.A. And he was working with fighters in Philly, and he was traveling constantly. And he was beginning to have problems where he couldn't be in two places at the same time. He was also becoming tired of living in Philadelphia. He developed a friendship with Kirk Kerkorian and made the decision to move to Vegas and build a house there. And... It would take a number of years, but he tried to consolidate his stable and what he was doing in Vegas as much as he could. When he first went to Vegas, they started doing weekly shows out of the Silver Slipper, and he worked with fighters at Johnny Toko's. Boxing has always had rivalries, and during this era, there were some obvious ones, and, you know, anytime have two great stables, they're bound to be matched against each other in different fights. And in Detroit, the ripples came out from the Brewster Recreation, and a lot of the DNA of the Brewster went into the Kronk. And this was eventually Emanuel Stewart's stable in his big project and um, Eddie studied them and was matched his fighters against the Kronk fighters repeatedly. Hey, if you like this stuff as much as I do, leave me a comment and thank you for your likes and comments and subscriptions. I really appreciate it.